Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker. By way of a toast to the man with S.D. Booker, I got a special, special guest. Man, I'm very fortunate to have this woman on platform. She is an author, a publisher, a celebrity writer, a writing coach, entrepreneur, spiritual OG. By way of Cleveland, she is now in Houston, Texas. She has written seven books of her own. Books like Heard It All Before, What Would You Do for Love 1 and 2, Helplessly in Love with a G, Surrender All My Love 1 and 2, and Plus. She has written or ghostwritten over 20 novels and memoirs. Hey, give a round of applause for this lovely, lovely woman, author Tay B. How you doing, Officer Tay B? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Like I said, I'm I'm honored to have you on. Uh, just to give the people uh, some background info, how I came across you. I actually don't know how I actually came across you initially, but I know I was looking at your page on IG, and I was like, I was impressed because I'm a writer myself. A newly published writer, self-published. But I was looking at your, 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 yeah, thank you. I was looking at your page. I was like, man, this woman is really on her hustle. She's on the grind. And this is this is what you do, right? This is your way of living. This is your livelihood, correct? Correct. That that's yeah. That uh, that's where I'm trying to go. That's where I'm trying to get to. And so I was impressed. I respect it. And uh. Yeah, just thank you for inspiring me, and, and I'm sure you'll inspire others that are watching this. So thank you so much. So, no problem. So let's take it back. Uh, I know I can't hold you all night, but I want to dive into your childhood, uh, what what happened in between that, and how you got to mm -hmm. Houston, and, and your whole trek, and then you know your trajectory, where you think you're going to go, where you want to go, you know, from today forward. So. You were raised in Cleveland, Ohio, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. How, how was that? Because I don't know much about Cleveland other than LeBron <laughs> James and the Cavaliers, but you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know much about Cleveland. How, how was Cleveland growing up? Um, Cleveland is, it's a, it's, it's a dangerous city for real. You know, it's a lot of violence. Um, I wish that Cleveland came together as much as I would like. Um, they have some positives, you know, I don't want to make it seem like it's a cool, it's just a negative city, but um, Cleveland needs some healing. Their energy is crazy out here, right. but I always say if you can make it in cities like Cleveland, you can make it anywhere. Wow, wow. And you know, I'm correct that. I do more, I do know more about Cleveland than LeBron James. That's, that was disrespectful. Bone thugs, bone thugs. You got to salute yeah. bone thugs. Yeah, I'm like, what am I thinking? Yeah, I was in, I was in high school uh, when they came out. So yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. That was a brain fart. But yeah, bone thugs got to salute them. Definitely. Uh, we yeah. have a lot of people from Cleveland that people don't know, like um, Holly Berry, Steve Harvey, Terrence Howard. They're from Cleveland. Oh wow! You know, they just got out of Cleveland so it's it's kind of that thing where it's the kind of a city where it's in my opinion Cleveland is a stepping stone city um there are people who stay and be successful my mom is one of them but for me I just felt like in order to um elevate spiritually mm -hmm. business wise I needed to leave right right you know, it's funny you say that because I have heard that about Cleveland, uh, but it was uh, pertaining to comedians. Like a lot of comedians uh, get a foundation and get their stepping stone mm -hmm. in Cleveland and then they'll take off. Yeah. yeah and, and you yeah. know, that, I, I can see the, the benefit of that and the downside because I feel like you got to somewhat stay and give back to the people who, yeah. who, who supported you, you know. Uh, but I get it that you want to, you know, broaden your horizons also, you know, for, I do get my city you. really didn't, my city didn't really support me. So okay. even when I come back and still want to give back to them, my city didn't support me. They supported other popular people in the city. Uh, and I never was envious of it because 
at the same time, before a lot of people was writing, there was me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was literally, you heard about other authors, but everybody knew that I wanted to write. Everybody knew I was in the forefront. And then right. other people came who were a little bit more popular to me. They got more love and more right. recognition right. in Cleveland. Right. Now, I never, I, at first, I'm not going to lie, you should take it personal for the, to the city, not the people, though. Right. You know, the people that's getting recognition, not they fault that everybody knows. You know what I mean? So, a lot of authors that I knew or that I befriended, it was out of genuine, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see you win, sis, this and that and the third. But I did realize that I would repost a lot of their books. I would, you know, just look out for a lot of authors, you know, from the city who did not want to look out for me at the same time. Right. Um, I did befriend um, another, like another female author. She she got real big. Me and her still mad cool. Um, but far as like, they didn't support me. So no. when I left, I didn't feel no type of way because it was people in different cities that supported me. It was Detroit. It was Houston. It was Cali. It was Atlanta. It was Virginia. It was everybody but Cleveland. Well, your and hometown. Then, wow. Yeah. And then it seemed like once Cleveland started seeing everybody else support me, then here came the fake love. And right. then here came some of the clients from Cleveland, which I don't have a lot of. I think I've had one client from Cleveland, maybe two, but other than that, my city don't support me, you know what I'm saying, like, I feel like, I don't want to to my own horn, but I just feel like, you know, you can be humble, but you can also be confident, I no want to how the that came out of Cleveland, I don't know nobody who's doing the stats I'm doing, and if, and if there are, you feel me, they can correct me, but yes. the type of stats that I did, and the, the little amount of time that I did, I don't know no author, no ghostwriter, nothing who did that. And I never got my recognition from the city. And I'm not worried about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I got my recognition from everyone else. And it's just that's just the truth. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Like Jay-Z said, hey, if I don't big myself up, you 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 act like I ain't doing it. So sometimes, you know, you got to give your, your own self your flowers. I, I totally agree. I think being humble sometimes yeah. is overrated. Uh, so yes. you gotta, yeah, you gotta be confident. Also, have humility, but be confident. I totally agree with you. So yeah. let's take it back to the childhood. When did you realize this is my gift, writing? And I and I like to say storytelling. You know, I know people used to the word writing, but I see myself and I see you as a storyteller. So when did you know that was your yeah. gift? Um. I knew at 12 that I wanted to write. It was just at 12, I was more so of a reader. So while everybody was outside playing, I was locked in my room the whole summer just, and I had stole my sister's book. And the first book I think I read, the first couple of books I read was No Disrespect by, by Sister Soldier. Wow. And I read Fly Girls by Omar Tyree. And then I got one, we ended up one of her books that I wasn't supposed to have, which was those and Zane addicted. So once oh, yeah. I read multiple genres at the same, I fell in love with reading because it was like, it took me away from reality because I had a rough childhood inside. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a mental battle inside. So it took me away from the mental battle that I was having inside. And then I turned 15 and in the ninth grade, I started writing books in my math notebook and math class. And <laughs> Not doing math work. Right. right. <laughs> Pass it to my classmates. Um, and I'm still cool with a lot of those classmates. And they always say, like, dang, we really used to read your book. And I used to write it, write a chapter, that whole class. And then I would give it to them and they would be like, okay, next, next period, write some more and give it to us tomorrow. And I literally will write a book over the course of a couple weeks just in a whole notebook because they was just, I mean, it would go around the whole class. Wow. And I always told them, particular ones, like, if you if you ever wanted a book, you can have it for free. Because they was my first audience. They was my first, no, you can write. You can do this. We know that you're going to be big, you know. So that was cool. Wow. Wow. You had that support. Well, yeah, you had a small pool of support early. And you knew right off the bat that, hey, this is what I want to do. That's 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 cool. You know, you said you were going through something internally and mm -hmm. the reading and the writing helped you. And I was telling someone the other day, 
they posted something. I didn't know this person. They posted something that was very uh, traumatic that happened in their childhood. And uh, I told the person, I commented, I said, man, you need to uh, tell your story. And uh, everyone's not a writer that has the gift of writing, but that's where people like you come in uh, to ghost write for them. But the thing with telling stories is, especially when it's dealing with trauma, uh, yeah. it's therapeutic. It's very therapeutic and it's cleansing. And so mm -hmm. when you tell your story, it's not only therapeutic for you, but it's other people out there that can relate. And they, they think they're the only ones going through it. But when you Absolutely. tell your story, it, it's healing to them also. And so, yeah, I, I constantly push that for people to tell their story. If, if not through book form, through YouTube or, or whatever, uh, tell your story. Cause uh, you know, when you hold that stuff in, that can, that can tear you down. So yeah, that, that yeah, that's, that's really true. Now you, you, you started writing, you're getting this following at an early age, which is, oh man, that's, that's something. You're getting 15, you're giving away books to supporters. When did you say, or what happened, the turning point that said, I'm going to make a living out of this. This is how I want to live. Um, I was 21 when I hit that turning point. So about eight years ago, um, I just, I was working for my mom because my mom has a daycare. So that was sort of like our family business. And as much as I like kids, <laughs> I don't like to, I don't like, I don't like to, to work with children every day. Mm -hmm. I'm a single woman with no children. So I've dated people with children, but working with kids every day ain't for me. I got long nails, as you can see. And now I feel like that's okay. Right. So I just got to the point where I was like, I don't want to do this. I want to be a writer. And um, I was reading a book by an author named Miss Lady P. And at the end of her book, I seen that uh, the publishing company that she was under was accepting submissions. I was never an outline writer, never been one. I sat down on my lunch break and typed up something real quick, three chapters of a book off the top of my head and I sent it to her. And she was like, it need a little work, but it's good. And the little work that she said I needed, I didn't even, I don't know what, why she said it because I did, she didn't do any work to, for it. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. Uh, not Miss Lady P, but the publisher. So she said I needed a little bit of work, and but she accepted me, sent over my contract. And you know, as you can imagine, I'm excited. Right. I'm like, oh, I'm about to get signed. I'm missing a third, not knowing what that actually meant. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going, um, getting this contract, sent it over to my mom, lawyer. My mom was like, you know, I'll never forget where I was at. I was in this one room that they had, and my mom was like, um, have your lawyer, you have my lawyer look over it, or whatever the case may be. And so I was like, okay. Um, he looked over and he was like, it's not the best contract, but you're a beginner writer. So you might as well go for it. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna go for it. Come to find out I was actually into a contract. It was a free book deal. Um, and the contract terms were 60% of the 60% Amazon gave was hers and 40 was mine. So initially, when you bring it in book sales, Amazon takes a percentage, right? right? So of that percentage that they took, whatever is left, she took 60 of that percentage. So from that percentage left me the 40%. The highest I've ever seen was $854 from that contract. Wow. Business is business. I understand. You know, I never downplay it. I never try to talk bad about her, but that was one of the reasons why I went independent because there was no marketing being done on my, that I can say. I know that she was doing little Instagram or Facebook ads and maybe posting in Instagram group, groups, but it's much more to marketing that bigger publishing companies that make $6.3 billion a year. No, you know, it's billboards, it's book tours, it's a lot more things. And I feel like in our community, we shot away from that. It was this wow. easy Amazon money, and y'all click and download. It was too easy for me. I felt like wasn't nobody doing no hard work. Now, granted, I don't want to, I don't want to discredit the million dollars that some I heard some publishers have made from Amazon. But 
I just couldn't fathom that Amazon, you made a million dollars promoting to Amazon. So Amazon got 60% of that. And then that year you made that million. That was your, that was your, that was your percentage. When you could have just did the work and went for free, like Jay-Z and Master P say, you don't mm-hmm. sign no deals. Cause if you know that you can make this, if they can know that you can make this much, you know that you're gonna double that, triple that, quadruple that. Right. Not to exactly. talk down on Amazon because I tell a lot of new authors do Amazon because they do a lot, lot, a lot of things for you, right. but you don't need a publisher for that. No, not at all. You don't mm-hmm. now you you can get somebody to do the work if you you know that's what I do. I do the work for you, but I don't take no percentage from you. It's not my story. Mm-hmm. Now you right. can pay me for my work. You can pay me for me marketing your book and teaching you how to do it properly, but right. you're not gonna pay me unless I foot that career the right way. You see what right. I'm saying? Right. So right. that's when I said, well, let's learn how to do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. And that's the reason why I self-published, and I hate saying self-published. That's what that's the reason men and wife created our own publishing company. Now that's the correct term. Yeah, that's we. The term. Yeah, I hate the self-publishing term. Uh, now we. The only only thing I would do next time coming up, I have my own website together, where I can do point of sale, direct sale to the customer. I don't have to deal with Amazon so much. Uh, but on the flip side, Amazon does have a reach that I don't have. Now you got. I'm 45, but you have more experience as a published writer than I do. I've been writing since yeah. I was 10 or 12, like seriously, but my published work, first published work was two years ago. So you're ahead of the game, uh, further along the game than I am, although I'm older. Uh, so, but you had a fan base. I didn't even have a fan base. And so, you know, I had to, yeah. I had to go, yeah. Only fan base I had was in school. So, you know, by the time we got out of school and we was 21, nobody cared that I was writing, you know? Uh, okay. So. The fan base that I built on Instagram was, it's, it's the golden rule. It's the secret. And it's not even a secret. It's just people don't take the time to learn. You have to market yourself. You yes. have to pay for promo. You have to pay for ads. You mm-hmm. have to pay for photo shoots. You have to look the part. You have to drop content every week so that people know who you are. Yes. You have to get on these big platforms. When these, when these people say, give me $600 to get on my platform, and I got one point what's the call the followers we say 600 that's too much i'm not paying that but i paid that 600 i paid the six the five the three the two i paid whatever price they told me to pay i paid it and that's why i got 19.4k followers and i made the living that i made because i paid for my advertising and i made my money every time i triple quadruple my money every single time it's not it's not it's not it's not rocket science it's no. just people make it rocket science because nowadays everything is so handed to us. So people are lazy. But there if you, you work go. for it, if you work for it and you pay for it, pay for it, just like you pay for your jordans, just like you pay for your jordans, your shoes, your hair, a wig is four hundred dollars. You should right. put that into a marketing ad. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's all it is. That's why companies are you can you can make money out of anything. I can sell tea right now because. I can make tea a multi-million dollar company right now because yes. I know how to market. No doubt. No doubt. And, and you hit it on the head. People are lazy. They don't want to do the work. And they don't, they don't understand that, or maybe they do, they just don't want to, that you have to reinvest in yourself. And that's, Absolutely. Part, that's part of it. You got you to gotta pay for access. Like you said, you know, you pay for a service. This person has access to an audience of 1.4 million or whatever, you getting on their platform gives you access to their platform. And people, I, I don't get it. Uh, but I don't allow people to cheapen the product or make excuses about something's too high because people will pay for what they want to pay for. So absolutely, no doubt, no doubt. And, and I'm glad you mentioned the marketing. That's what I was going to hit on. Uh, what was your, what, what's the biggest component of getting your book sales, you know, of course you got to have the talent, but would you say marketing is the next biggest thing? I think the next big thing is definitely marketing. Um, and I, I think marketing comes before the talent, to be honest, because if you have one book 
If you have one book and you market this book, let's say to, I don't know, five million followers, you might have a sale of a thousand sales, you know, from that book. Right. The first a thousand people who buy that book don't even know it's trash. Right. And the second day that you market, you might have, let's say you have $800, you have 800 customers, right? The 800 customers don't know that the first a thousand people read that book and it's trash either. So then the next day you keep promoting, you keep going on. And now you'd have made a hundred thousand off this book that people can that people say it's not that good, right? Right. Right. You made six figures off one book before anybody could even read it, could even <laughs> just, just based off your marketing. Right. Now your second book gonna have a hard time because exactly. some people don't think that it's trash. Exactly. But even with but even with marketing, everybody, everybody doesn't like something. So because this first 1800 people said it was corny, the next 2500 might not. But the reason why you still can make money is because you can still market it the correct way. And then you have some people who, if you know what you're doing, you're going to market the first and the second together. Because it's going to be 3000 people who didn't see the first one. And now they just now seen the second one. And now they want to read both of them. Yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's about talent to keep long life in. Right. But it's about marketing. If you want to be technical for the aspect that's more important than even having the talent in the beginning i'm not even going to lie because you have to look at the rap game too there's a lot of rappers who we all know back in the day and in your day would not have last right they would right. last they would they would have got booed off a of stage but right, right but marketing is making these people rich right right but we know artists yeah. even musicians rappers like we they got us with their first album you know what I'm saying? They got us with that first album, especially a lot of uh no limit artists, I think, man. Got us with that first album. <laughs> ah man, for real. And I'm from Texas, born and raised Dallas, Texas. But they got us with a lot of artists on that first album, but that second album flopped. So you're right. The marketing is key. You can you can uh, do very well for marketing, but to have those retention customers that, that come back and that they're asking you, hey man, when's the next book coming out? that that's talent that takes talent yeah so so no doubt now i always like to ask writers or musicians what is their muse their inspiration for writing well what because sometimes i don't feel like writing you know uh but once i get in the groove man it, it's hard to pull me away but what inspires you um really what really changing the game bringing it back, taking it to um, back in the day where you can write one book and you can make a million dollars and go on a book tour for a whole year off that one book. And you don't got to write another one for five years. Wow. You know, um, what re really inspires me is when you Google how much a certain, if you Google how much book sales were in 2021, it's not even over with, you got $6.3 billion. That's really what motivates me because you have the big publishing companies in New York who do book deals that give celebrities $8 million to be their publisher and they take percentages because they give you an advance. Right. But it's not common for our people to do that. It's not common for our people to, unless you are on this pedestal to be like that. Right. So I kind of want to change the narrative and I want to make it so People like you and me who don't have this celebrity status, we can still go on book tours and we can still have fans and we can still have people who love us and adore us in the book game. And somebody can give us a chance to make that million, to, to tap into it. Because I feel like we can all tap into it. It's 6.3 billion. I think we can all get a pick. We can all scrape oh, yeah. a million up out of oh, it. Yeah. No doubt. You know, collectively, no doubt. about 30 of us could for real and still be cool. You know what I'm saying? So- and, then, and it can always rock. It can always yeah. go up to 10 million, 20 million, you know, to, to yeah. 20 billion, to 100 billion in this book game because the more people you got, the more money you can make. And I always tell people the, the publishing and author game should never be a competition, ever. Because not one person is going to say, I'm going to read this one book and I'm going to put it out. Right. Never have nobody ever done that. Right. Nobody is like, okay, I got your book. I got SD Booker book. And then I got Arthur Tavy and I got to choose which one I want to read. No, nah, it don't work you know, like that. They're going to yeah. read one and then they're going to read the other. You know, right. this is not the nail game, the hair game, the lash game. We literally can be everyone's favorite author. You're right. And 
that's why I think it's 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 too sweet for anybody to pass up who really want to do it. It's just any it's if it's a lot if it's enough of us, we can all be the next Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is nothing but a storyteller. Yes, yes, that's it. So it's Shonda Rhimes. Yes, yes, and yes. people people don't get it. You know, they, they're telling stories now. You know, they're good at it. You know, and that's where the talent comes in. How how good are you at developing characters and and you know building a story up? So, you know, that's where the true talent comes in. But they're storytellers, like me and you. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, man, you mentioned something very important about collaboration, network. Have you formed a network? Are you a part of a coalition of, of writers or publishers that are moving forward? I'm not. It's just yeah. me and my authors. But do I want to make one? Absolutely. I will absolutely make one for... Because I just feel like I ultimately want to make one because I feel like nobody knows how to market the correct way. And we had these books and everybody has these books out here and no one know people don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So if I can get some workshops going, if I can put my party in and say, hey, if you want to be a publisher, that's fine. You know, we're not in competition. We work together. You, it, It's a million people in this world right. and they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop living. You know what I'm saying? They're going to keep having kids, kids on top of kids, on top of kids, on top of kids. So it's not like we're never going to, you know, be a shortage of books or stories, but we need to learn how to do it the correct way. Right. You know, so if I can make a network like that in some way, or I can make a retreat for strictly publishers, strictly ghostwriters, strictly independent authors, you know what I'm saying? Or even authors who want to become independent, even my authors, I always tell them, Y'all need to, I teach them how to market their books so they don't have to come back and market. Right. Right. If y'all don't want to do the work, I, give me my, you can give me my $1,500 to $3,000 and I'll do it for you. And you can take your free marketing class and you learn how to make that thousand, that 3000 turn into 20000 right. But if not, you know, you can always come back and, you know, whatever the case may be. But I teach them how to be independent. Because I don't want, I don't want you to be on my back. I don't want no crutch. You right. know, I tell people all the time, you can, I tell them, you can do the same thing I'm doing. You can right. have, you can have people write your book. You can write other people's books and tell them I need 7,000 for you to write this book and I need a deposit of whatever. You know what I'm saying? I want to teach people how to do this and right. make money and make six figures and create a lifestyle. I've been doing this. Now I have, I have been in business for, Six going on seven years, I think. Six going on seven, my business. Mm -hmm. And I have literally, um, my big break happened two years ago. So I went broke. I lost my car about this business. I did it all about this business. You know, a lot of it was ego to win, family issues and other things like that as mm -hmm. to why that happened. But still, it, it, it had a lot to do with, you know, my ego and my healing and trauma, stuff like that, why I lost a lot. But at the end of the day, when I lost my car, I still made sure that I was going to write that book. When I didn't have, when I was stuck in my ways and had to stay in a motel, guess what? I was writing my client's book in a motel, six. Motel. And you. So if it's in you, it's in you, you're going to do it broke. Yeah. I did it broke, yeah. flat broke. <laughs> wow. So that's it's what I say. Yeah, anybody yeah. can do it. If yeah. I can do it, you can do it. I'm, I say, I'm just like you and me all the time. My mother hates that. She says, you're not like everybody else. I be like, it's not that I'm like y'all. It's just, you can relate to my story. We from the hood. Yeah. We came from the same way, you know? Man, I, I like the way you think. You know, it's like that old saying, the old adage. You give a, you teach a man, uh, you give a man a fish, he'll be, he keep coming back to you for fish. But if you teach him how to fish, you know, he'll, he'll be able to fish on his own and be self-sufficient. So I like the way you think. Yeah. A lot of people don't think like that. They they want you to be subservient and and, and be uh, dependent on them. But you're, you're enabling, you, you are empowering people. I respect that. Now, of course, you're a female, a sister. Do you think there's a different group of challenges that face women? Because, and I ask this because, and this may be a little different, maybe not. I noticed like in the rap game, I, you found out that, and, I, and maybe it's the same with men too, but maybe it's just highlighted with the females, that the fe a lot of females are not writing their own lyrics in the rap game. Mm -hmm. 
And maybe mm-hmm. it's the same with guys, but they just highlight the females that are not, you know, you know, maybe it's a double standard. But mm-hmm. I don't think females really uh, get the respect that a lot of brothers get for their pin game. Do, what's your thoughts on that? I think it's true. Um, I think I think men can come. Men have an advantage in the game because a lot of there. I'm not. I'm gonna watch my words because I be getting caught up when I be saying stuff. Right. <laughs> but men have an advantage. Women want a fantasy, right? Mm-hmm. So if I'm an attractive male and I write in this book about this attractive male who do this to a woman and who treats this woman like, oh, I'm going to start lusting over the author. Mm-hmm. Now, we all know we have an LGBT community and sometimes it happens with women as well. Mm-hmm. But it's more common for you to be like, I'm about to go buy his book because he's fine. And <laughs> it's not more common for you to be like, oh, I'm about to go buy her book because she's cute. No, we have to prove that we can write. A man... Mm-hmm. You really don't have to prove that you have to write for real. But what I ha- what I can say is I'm not saying that this is always the case, but a lot of men write better than women. They can really tell a story better than some women that I've read. But I've also went to some author events and I've seen a male fresh in the game, fresh in the game, mm-hmm. fell out like that because he's a man at this event and mm-hmm. I'm seeing women who have 30 books written 30 books it's not not common in the Facebook world for you to write 56 books or you know they may, may not be longer quality or whatever the case may be I, right. no shade to nobody but right it's not it's not not common for a woman to have 20 15 30 books you know what I'm saying right. but I, I've seen a man with one sell out and leave yeah. With phone numbers because it's just yeah. it's and an advantage. That's yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't lie to my male authors. Some of them mm. are physically fit. You mm. know, we got some bodybuilders or or some fitness instructors on the team, or whatever the case may be. Right. We just have some handsome men. They are physically fit or whatever on my team. And I tell right. them, let's just be honest. You don't gotta mm. be a gigolo, but right. I mean let's let's, let's milk it. Yeah, well, let's milk. Well yeah, let's milk it. You know, that's crazy you say that because I'm a part of two two writers groups on Facebook. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And I hear I read women saying they've had this book. They, they put this book out a year ago, two years ago. They've only sold five books. I'm like, how is that possible? Like, how is that even possible that you sold five books? And here I am. My book is called A Toast to the Men. Now, this book isn't emasculating men or bashing women. It's not that yeah. at all, but it's called A Toast to the Men. My number one demographic that, that buys and supports the book is the female, the Black female. So it just, it's like, wow, I, it, this is my first published work. And a lot of people didn't even know I wrote. That was just like a family thing. My family and close friends knew that. And so for them yeah. to support me like that, I was like, man, I was humble. And I'm seeing this other side of the game, people complaining. And I'm just like, man, just if you market, I, I figured if you just market once a week, you could sell a book a week. But I, I guess it's not that simple, though. So the woman, listen, and this is not no shape, nobody. I don't want to pity party for women, but we, we know women got to work harder in everything they do. Yeah. men can come in and be nurses and everybody want nurse bay and they got all the <laughs> jobs and they go yeah. you know what i'm saying like we got to work a little harder but for me it is what it is you know i don't feel like we should women should dwell on that in this industry because there are just as many successful women as there are men just do just do your marketing and granted men don't men can post the picture looking nice in a suit with a book and they gonna buy it because he looked nice in the suit okay yeah. Now me, sometimes I'm guilty of it. I go to that page and be like, "Oh, you know, let me read the bio though, because I don't want to get caught up." You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, so, right. At the like, end of the day, like, I I feel like men should take advantage of that. I don't, I'm sorry, like, and, and women be like, "Oh, that's wrong." It's not. Yeah. Let they 
Y'all going to buy it because I'm cute. Let them buy it because they cute. Y'all shouldn't feel no type of way because I wouldn't. If a man, if all men came to me and wanted to buy my book because I was going, because I'm cute, I was going to sell it. I'm not going to not. No doubt. Hey, you think no I'm doubt. Thank you for the mm-hmm. sale. You know yes. what I'm saying? So I Thank you for the support. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I totally agree. Now, what brought you to Houston? Because that's, that's quite a ways away in distance. Cleveland and Houston. So, I met someone who was um, in marketing and uh, we ended up being really, really cool. And uh, they actually signed a contract with my mom to market her uh, business. And so me and this person became mad cool. We were like, hey, um," he was like, and he was like, hey, you know, if you move to uh, Houston, I, I, I know how to get on TV. I know how to market, blah, 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 blah. So I'm seeing this guy work on Instagram. Mind you, it wasn't like a romantic thing because he is gay. But I see him, you know, just doing his thing on Instagram. I'm, I'm falling for the Instagram hype, you know? And I'm like, okay, well, you can help me market and I can work up under you. I mean, I can do my business anywhere. I'll pick up, I, I'll go broke for my business. So, you know, <clears throat> I must take a leap of faith for it. A big leap of faith, clearly. Yeah. So... Uh, March of this year, I ended up moving to Houston for that. Ended up being a complete lie. It's actually a lawsuit forming against him and his company and my mom's wow. business. So I really can't speak on the, the litigations of, of what not. transpired, why he's got a lawsuit, but just know he was just basically it wasn't what it, it was supposed to be. And right. I, I picked up and moved 1,800 to 2,000 miles away from my family, my friends in the city by myself, and, and nothing ever happened. But, you know, thank God that my my business was still booming. I was still doing my content. I was still blessed. And it helped me elevate to a higher spiritual level. So I'm thankful for that. Um, but, yeah, it just came from somebody just, you know. Just lying. Lying, to you. Yeah. Business, lying, thinking, you know. And, and people don't think that you're going to get up and, and go hard for your business like that. Right, right. Like, Oh, you about to move to another city? You're crazy. You picked right. up your life for this business. That means it's really, this is really something I love. It's really my passion. Like, that's how I know I'm going to be in the billions because I, I did something like that, picked up and it wasn't that. So I would basically been in Houston eight months. Um, I think me and that guy did one meeting wow. and I was supposed to be on um, one of his clients' books. Didn't do that, you know, so... um. It's actually weird because he had a party and I was like working there, helping at the party. And someone Mm -hmm. actually recognized me from his party. Like, I didn't know that was you. Can I take a picture with you? You know, so and then (laughs) the energy was just after that, it it made my energy weird because I felt like I shouldn't be working for nobody because I don't work for my mom. And then it just, you know, um, his people were pleasant. They were rude, you know, so overall bad experience but it was such a positive experience to be in Houston to be in the sun um by myself for real yeah yeah how's the community you know of course I'm in Dallas right down the street from from Houston so to speak but how's the community as far as writers and publishers uh literary work how's the community in, out there in Houston I, I cannot tell you, you could tell okay I couldn't because I really, you know, when you make friends, I'm 27. Now, people think that's young, but I can't remember how to make friends. I <laughs> Normally, when you make friends, it's because you're going to your job every day. You know what I'm saying? And you befriend Keisha, and Keisha got a friend, and Keisha friend got a friend. Right, right. Or somebody who worked from themselves, yeah. Keisha ain't got no friends because, right. you know, you don't want to go, you don't go to a bar and be like, hey, I'm in the city by myself, let's be friends, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I get that, yeah. So I never really made friends. I made one friend, and yeah. that friend passed away, ironically. Oh, wow. So I never made friends, so I, I didn't know if there were other authors. I, I'm pretty sure in that big of a city, if I was able to network the correct way, it would have, it would have, it would have took off so crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, sounds <laughs> like, see, it sounds like you're you're an introvert. I'm an introvert. Like, I kind of, I'm kind of to myself somewhat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and no, because okay. I'm really friendly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Being by myself, it's like 
I don't got to go to the club. I can go get me a bottle of Chardonnay and watch TV in the house and I don't have a problem. I'm real, you know, thoughts in my, you know, because for eight months, it's just been me and my thoughts, me and my healing, me and my spiritual, you know, journey or whatever. And just talking on the phone to people and talking on the phone with family. And, you know, it was, it was hard because you, you didn't have any human contact. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you just exist in a, in a really big city, but for me, I don't want to discourage people to not up and move if that's what they want to do because I don't regret it. I I found so I had fun in some cases. I went out, you know. It was it was a good thing spiritually for me to move out of Cleveland, but I, I would do it again. I will I will do it again. Like I will pick up and move somewhere else in another big city wow, wow. because I'm a risk taker. I feel like if you don't take no risk, you're not gonna never know. And the, the worst thing you can do is this: you're gonna die. That's it. Going broke, did that. The press did that. The worst thing gonna happen is I'm gonna die, so I'm gonna go. Wow, wow. I, and I'm glad you said that because I was thinking it. You're doing great things already, but you're destined for even greater heights because of that. Because you are a risk taker and you're fearless. And I want people to really understand that you can't ever get to where you want to go to or fulfill your purpose if you're scared. You know, Mm -hmm. um, there's a level of uncertainty and caution in a lot of us, most of us, but you got to be courageous and fight through it and say, hey, what if I have have to lose at the end of the day? Hey, at all, you know, it it is what it is. Let's push forward, but I don't want to die with regrets. That's the main thing. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I say that to you. Yeah. So you've written seven books for yourself, you know, over 20 Yeah. Uh, you ghost written over 20 memoirs and novels, but for yourself, you've written seven books. Now, what would you say, this two-part question, what would you say is your baby, I hate to separate the kids, but what would you say is your baby, <laughs> and what book would you suggest for a first-time supporter? Oh, that's hard because my baby is in place. I, I, I know, I know, I know. But somebody watching this, come in, con- come in contact. To- yeah. Okay, so I would have to say my baby is Surrender All My Love. That was the first book I ever published. The book cover is all wrong. That's my mistake. <laughs> it, it was like trial and error book, but it was such yeah. an amazing story. Yeah. And for my first time reader, if you was a first time reader of mine and you came in the game, this is so hard. I know, I know. I told you I hate to separate the kids, but you know, people are wondering that listening to this. They're like, okay, damn, I dig her. She seemed fly. I, I, I want to support. Then which book should I get first? You know, that's how people okay. think. I will have to say I recommend oh my god i recommend um surrender on my love that series okay i think i did a really 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 dope job with that series and that that surrender on my love with my first baby that's the first book that i published myself like i said i messed up the cover and i never changed it because it was like oh well you know so um i that's my baby. So I, I definitely would recommend that. But yeah. the rest no of doubt. them was just as good. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Now, you do, you provide a lot of services. Not only are you a mm-hmm. ghostwriter, but you do mentorship, the one-on-one mentoring. Can mm-hmm. you tell the people about that? What 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 is what it what entails, what is entailed in that? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to give out the price or tell them to go to the website. I'm gonna have that in the description I- also, but it's a, it's a few. I can get something to, to tell me the price. Give two seconds. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the price. I'm on mine. Okay, so um, um the mentorship is basically working one-on-one with me. So in that mentorship, you basically um learn how to write a book the correct way. Now I'm not gonna write it for you. But I'm going to help you, like, you know, with your commas, your periods. We're going to structure that thing the right way. Um, I've even given some people suggestions to how to end the book as well. So that you have my full uh, undivided attention is based around you. It's not a, it's not a, like, 
push thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't hit me up and you and you and you pay for this yearly membership, that's on you. I'm not, I don't push people in my mentorships. I don't do that because I feel like you have to write on your own terms. It took me a year to write a book before and it took me a week to write one. So it's on you, you know, what you're going through. Um, and you learn how to publish your book. I tell you how to publish. I give you marketing. I tell you how to do that. So it's basically like you get all three classes in one plus you get unlimited questions for me. Um, my mentees don't have no chill. They text me at all hours of the night. I, if they see that I make an Instagram post, they be like, hey, girl, read this real quick. And I'll be like, give me to tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you you basically, it's, it's just a hands-on thing with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I tell you everything, just how I'm talking to you. I tell you everything, the, the down, dirty, the everything that you need to know how to be an independent, successful, independent author. And yeah. I have a lot of mentees who get done with the program. They say, it's a lot of money because yeah. I got a market. And then yes. I tell them. You want to work your nine to five or you want to be an author? You have to make that sacrifice. Don't go get your nails done. There you go. Don't go get there your you hair go. done. Do yeah. something. You take something down so yeah. that, or or start a fund. Do $100 every couple, you know, paychecks until you can get the amount that you need to market your book. But you can't come in this game thinking that you're not going to have to put no money up. Right. And no. the mentor, that, that's just, it's unrealistic. And people be thinking that's what it's going to be in this mind. They be thinking you can just put, you can just do that and then it's over with and then mm. it's not. You gonna um, to be a millionaire? I, I think you gonna you gonna have to sacrifice a lot of thousands. That's what I say. No doubt, no doubt. Now another service you um, got. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think the mentorship program right now is on sale. Yep, it's on sale for six hundred. The original price is two thousand, and that's per year. Man, that's a deal. That's a steal. Yeah, I need to jump on that. That's a steal. Uh, I'm telling you, for the knowledge this woman has, that's a steal. So you better jump on that sale, that promotion right now. Uh, I'm definitely going to get with you. I know I've already got a book out, I've done some marketing, but my marketing can't touch yours. And so I'm definitely going to gonna uh, enlist in the service uh, because I'm trying to make this my livelihood, I'm trying to get rid of the yeah. nine to five and, and just live okay. off of my God-given gifts. So I'm definitely going to be signing up. I'm happy uh, to help you. Now, there's another service. I don't know if this is part of the one-on-one, -on -one, but I saw consultation. Mm -hmm. You do consultations. Is that something mm -hmm. different? Yeah, that's if you don't know what you need. You know, you have some people who don't know what they need and they come in my DMs and not read the FAQs first. But mm. these are for the people who like... I don't know if I want to write my own book. I don't know if I want to learn how to write my own book. I don't know if I just need a mentor. I don't know if I just need marketing. Those are for people who don't really know. Um, and then you schedule a consultation. I'll give you a phone call. We go over my pricing, what I think, what service I think will work better for you. And then we can do a call of action. Some people say, all right, sis, when I get the money, I'll call you back. And some people will be ready to write it in there. Yeah, yeah that, that, that happens. Well... You know, my wife, she she purchased one of your books, or maybe you sent one too. I'm not sure how that worked, but she was impressed, and uh, she was into the characters. So I'm gonna bring her on, and, and uh, okay, and, and and let her give a review. So here she comes. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. trying to connect. All right, baby, can you hear me? You got it. I can hear you. Can you hear uh, me? Yes, yes. Arthur Tay B. This is my wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Arthur Tay B. Hi. Hi, Tay. It's so <laughs> nice to meet you. I you feel too. So How are you? I read your book and now I'm sitting here looking at you. I just feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah, you yes. So What'd you say, baby? I can't hear you. I was gonna tell. I was gonna tell her that she's beautiful. Oh, I Thank thought you. Was calling, you are I, I thought you was calling me beautiful. Okay. Uh, right. No. <laughs> <laughs> she is beautiful. Uh, <laughs> now, which book did you purchase, babe? Which book did you read? What would you do for love? What would you do for love? Oh, yeah. how'd you like it? Yeah. 
Let me see how you, first of all, I just want to tell you, thank you for writing such an amazing book. I mean, I literally could not put it down. And that's, that's difficult for me because I'll just, I'll read a book and, and uh, it might take me three or four weeks to finish it if I'm not interested, but I think I finished this in a couple of days. This book was good. Thank yeah. you so much. Now, so, I know there, there's a part two. Go ahead, but you wanted to ask some questions, but I know there's a part two. You said you're looking for the four. Looking forward to the part two, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were you gonna my say? My favorite, my favorite character Tay was um Denver. Okay. <laughs> Twenty one years old, the head of a major drug operation in uh, Cleveland. She stepped up and took care of her sisters. I mean, the way she just had to grow up and become an adult really fast. I was I was impressed with her. She really yeah yeah she okay. she was tough she was a tough cookie and she was uh-huh Deborah is my favorite character so i was gonna ask you which character reminds you of yourself or someone in your family or friends or when i first did the characters they were based around me and my sisters right uh -huh. so Originally, I was Denver because I had the piercings. My um, middle sister was Imani, and okay. the other one was Sunny. And then I kind of mixed and matched. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. And then I just kind of gave Denver my personality. I gave her like, if I was in this situation, if I would do that, you know, what would I do in this situation? And then her. Um, boyfriend was based on my boyfriend at the time oh really okay okay yeah, yeah i love it. there was something about denver that i resonated with I, I really liked her um all of them were good characters though you had several characters and they all had different personalities and i was just like you you kept that shock value going so that's what made it even more interesting. And you had several jaw, uh, jaw dropping moments. My tongue is getting tired because I'm just excited. <laughs> but um, um, from Chloe getting killed, yeah. let me tell you, that 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 had me in tears. I had I let a few tears flow. And sometimes my husband will tell me that I'm I, I try to be hard. You know, I don't show emotions when I'm watching the movies. But yeah, I cry. I cry didn't, quicker than you. You didn't see me cry, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. I did. I cried writing it, which was kind of weird because it's like you're making it up. But it's I want emotion to be in it. I want people to feel like they're in a movie. Like this is real. I want you to be like, this is real life. And it's not. <laughs> right. Right. But I was like, I was just kind of like, oh, no, not Chloe. And then um, I really liked Midnight, the way you kind of brought him in there. Because I was wondering what his part was. I said, okay, okay. I like the way you wrote him in there. I, I don't want to tell too much of- you, You're of, telling a lot of- the <laughs> right. I, I, I was about to cut you off like, they ain't got to get the book. You fine. You fine. You so fine. You fine. I, I, I apologize to the listeners. You still gotta buy the book because right. there's right. a lot that I haven't even touched on. But right. um, yeah, and, and I'm, the, the, I, you know, the way you ended it with Denver, I said, "Oh my God!" I know. But don't I, tell. Don't, don't tell. The, don't I'm tell it. Okay. I didn't think it. I said, uh, "Oh." My but I just wanted, <laughs> I wanted to ask you what what can I expect from part two? You you might cry more. You might okay. um, expect ex, expect expect some more death. Um, expect some twists and turns that you did not think that was coming. Basically, okay. something that you was like, oh, this is unbelievable. I never would have thought it was coming. You know what I'm saying? But I will say it's going to be somewhat of a happy ending. But okay. um, when you read it, I want you to contact me and you tell me what you think. Email, DM me. I'll give you my okay. number, whatever. I want to talk. I okay. want you to know because I think you're going to be mad at me a little bit. But I'm uh, see, you see, I'm already looking at you like, what? That's a good That's a good thing. As a writer, that's a good thing when they mad at you. <laughs> I think 
I think he's gonna be a little mad, but I think he's bad. I just need you to read it. So I, I, I'll, I'll be emailing you going, Tay, what are you doing? What are you? Yeah, one, I will give you hint, one of the main characters is going to die. Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm going to start on that one tonight. So I will definitely email you. And I just want you to know you have a new member of your fan club. I absolutely love your books. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, beautiful. I really do. And I want to yeah. add this. I want to add this, people. Every day, I would see her in her laptop, and I never put the two together, the book and the laptop. And I would ask her, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm reading the book. I was like, oh, okay. And I would do this like every, every day. I don't know why I kept asking this, but she was reading the book every day for hours. She, would, she wouldn't lift her head up. I'm like, what are you doing? So I'm reading the book. I was like, okay. That's how much she was into it. So... Y'all, I really was. Hey, and and, and I'm telling you, Yaya is picky. He, she's picky, I, man. When man. we hear when we hear singers <laughs> on the radio on TV, I, or actors or actresses, I go to her. I look at her. I'm like, what you think? And she <laughs> she'll give me she give me the thumbs up, uh, thumbs down. She's very picky, and so <laughs> for her to say this is a great read, trust me, it's a great read. It really is. Yeah, I will yeah. start on part two tonight. Okay, and you gotta remember to tell me. I will. I, I will. I love <laughs> interacting with anybody who support me and read it because it'd be a roller coaster and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've gotten I've emailed you before, so you'll you'll know when you see the email. Okay. <laughs> so so I okay. won't hold you. Arthur Tay B, I just want to ask you, um, what's ahead? What, what's next on the list, on the plate? Um, I want to write another one. I haven't wrote a book in like maybe two years, so I want to write another one. And then just, I already just... Um, let me pause. Let me pause right. you right there. Let me pause you right there. Y'all, yeah. toasters, she's stunting. You see that stunt? She ain't wrote a <laughs> book in two years. That was a stunt. <laughs> Shane wrote, and this is her livelihood. <laughs> this is her livelihood. Shane wrote a book. No, it wasn't. I promise. <laughs> no, no, no. But I salute. I salute. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I I wanted to uh I want to teach more. Teach people. I want to teach about customer service because I've had so much issues with customer service, people, staff. So um, I want to teach customer service, other authors, um, how to pick the correct staff to help them. I've ran through three assistants. So I just want to teach them how to market the correct way, how to get the money, how to get people to support you, just be genuine. And a big thing in this industry is I want people to learn how to, when you are bad at customer service, apologize. Mm. Or even if it's your staff member, apologize. Because it, it may not be you, but it's a reflection of you. You know what I'm saying? My my old assistants used to email people like they were me instead of saying assistant of is retarded, but whatever. I actually had a situation and it just blew my mind. I don't know why I'm thinking about that, but I just want to teach other authors about customer service um, and how to create this lifestyle from writing books. But I also want to teach people that you can write other people's books and create a six-figure business. And you can publish people's books and not write a book if you don't want to. Because the trick is I haven't read it, I haven't written a book in two years, but that's because I haven't written my own. Mm, there you go. So my biggest moneymaker is gonna always be ghostwriting because one book is $20. One ghostwriting contract is up to 12, depending on how much they want, you know. So mm. I just want to teach other writers how to get $12,000 contracts, how to get $20,000 contracts, how to get my lowest, I think I took, my lowest I think I take now is like five grand. And I'm not going no lower than that. Right. So that's my lowest. I want to teach people how to do that. And I started off just making a thousand dollars off writing. You know, hey, I can write this 44,000 bucks. You know, everybody got thousand dollars. Well, working people really do, you right. know. So I just want to teach people, other authors like me, 
the customer service aspect, just be excellent. I get so many great reviews from my clients about my, and I just think it's important. It's important for the black community and for all communities, but mainly for us, because when we not, when we don't do customer service, we get bashed so bad. Yeah, it's highlighted. Yeah. So, so bad. And I had, like, I had a couple of situations, like I said, but I think I bounced back from them. But my, overall, I have a great satisfaction with customers and my clients. I've never had a complaint, you know, and if I did, I fixed it like that. Uh-huh. So that's the trick to keep making money in this business is that people can't go to the blogs and different things like that and talk bad about you. Yeah, yeah. Literally, true. literally, I've had a situation um, with a huge celebrity in the blogs. My name was never spoken and people do not know still to this day. Wow. Like a huge, wow. a huge. Wow. People don't know because you, you gotta keep your mouth closed. It's confidential, but it's like I've worked with a lot of big names, and you can too. It's not hard. Hey, I'm in line. Listen, I will subscribe and okay. sign up. That's, that's that's my dream. So I'm just I'm fortunate and blessed. I came across you for real. And I'll teach you everything you need to know. I like I said, you're not competition because mm-hmm. eventually I'm gonna start writing. So right, right, right. <laughs> Eventually, I'm gone, man. My fingers start to hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carpal tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Eight years in the game. You're like, all right. You know, now you can teach people to do what you do, player. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no doubt. There you go. No doubt. So I'm, well, down, I'm down for that. All right. Well, hey, Arthur Tay B, listen, I appreciate you. This is this was an epic conversation. Uh, I think people are going to get a lot from it. I just thank you for sitting down with me because I know you know, you're, you're a busy one. You got things going on. So uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate y'all too. Y'all reach out to me anytime. Let me know. I got you. Whatever you need, let me know. I'm down to earth. I'm going to email, email me so days. I know. Yes, you email me exactly so I know who you are because I'm going to send you two more books. So just email me so I know which email you come okay. I will. <laughs> and I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you two more because I want your opinion on. I really love your energy. Okay. I really. Okay. Oh, and I love your you. energy too. I thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. All right. Peace. Love. All right. Peace love. and love, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.